What is going on people and welcome back to the channel. In this episode I'm going to be picking up the new parts for the Aston and getting them bolted on. So I've arrived here at German Auto Moto and this week they've got an Aston in for braking and it turns out it's the exact same Aston as mine. It's not an M420 but it's the same year, same model, all the parts are identical. And for anyone that knows a little bit about Astons is the N420 only really differs in like splitters, diffusers, side skirts, that sort of stuff. So the main parts of it are the exact same. But fortunately I found the same year and it's a very similar mileage. So all the parts what I'm going to be putting back on, for example the radiator, it's not going to be overly worn compared to the vehicle because that were a worry of mine is putting like a 70,000 mile radiator on a 10,000 mile car and then the radiator eventually goes and I've got to strip the front end strip, strip the front end down all over again so I'm going to pop in now I'm going to pick up all my parts I'm going to try and squeeze them into the van as best I can I've got a big van that's very empty but I want to lie everything flat so it doesn't get damaged on the journey back so that's all the parts squeezed in and I didn't get a special price from German Auto Motor. I didn't get a special YouTubers edition price because I know a lot of people like to do a build like this. They get it cheaper and then they tell you how cheap it is and it's impossible for you to replicate. But I paid retail, I paid £7,000 for all those parts which is reasonable. I think the next listing on eBay was £7,500. Um, so I've got all those parts now and what I can say is German Auto Motor were an absolute pleasure to deal with and it's always a little bit of a risk when coming to companies maybe like this that you don't know that you might end up with like stolen parts or something but um they did they gave me faith that all these parts were completely legit and and he was telling me stories about times where people have offered to sell him stolen parts and he's and he's absolutely turned them away because they're not interested in that so a very nice professional outfit and if you are looking for broken parts or breaker cars then I'd, I'd probably recommend giving these a call first before you go to anyone else now they don't often have Aston Martins in so maybe once this Aston Martins done that'll be them done with Aston Martins but they have quite a lot of Audis in and Volkswagen stuff so if you are looking for parts give them a shout so that's all the parts in so let's make our way back to Richard at Hamworthy Body Shop so we can get all these parts back on the Aston and maybe get it running So then one of the things I did get from the breaker is this this uh, this plug was broken during the impact. This was plugged into the airbox and the airbox was smashed and then this plug was broken. The good bit about it is, is the metal pins inside are not damaged at all. It's just the plug that has broken around it. So what I'm going to try and do is I've, I've taken this from the other vehicle. So worst case scenario, I can cut this and crimp it on. But what I am going to try and do is I'm going to try and remove the pins from this and slide these pins in there so it's as good as factory. Um, I'm not sure if they're removable. My history of working on these in with Audi and Volkswagen, it's not always that successful getting them apart. But what I am hoping is that because this is handmade and they they put them all together by hand and they're not moulded plugs, hopefully they come apart a little bit easier. So first of all, I'm going to try and get this out. I'm going to just use two no special tools in here. I've just got two Allen keys here that um, I'm just going to try and pry. So if you just have a look in here, you can probably see at the bottom of the metal contacts these two little black clips and I'm hoping that they're the only thing returning the metal pins so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this skinny one just down just down here hopefully pull it out and then I can try and pull the cable from the back it's not always easy and that's that one free sorry about my camera skills here and then the same again with the second one and then that's that one free and then we've got exactly what we've got in the car there so as long as I remember which way they go in so the ends are facing that way I can set this up on here and hopefully slide this plug straight in we've got to make sure that we push our little weather seal just in there and that is now fixed in easy job probably would have cost a decent amount for a dealer to do something like that um, because they would have they probably think that that requires a specialized tool um, but yeah, easy, easy to do. I mean, these weren't even really ideal. These were just the first things that I grabbed and it happened to work. So I'm here now with Rich and we've got, I've come across a problem that I don't necessarily know how to fix. And that is in terms of the vehicle that I've got all these spare parts from is, it's come from obviously a purple looking vehicle. 
Now, all these parts, what we're going to bolt on, that are going to go behind the body panels. You really will never see these, but I, I want to get them for my peace of mind back to a normal colour or something that at least matches the vehicle. So I just thought I'd speak to Rich about just some ideas on how we can maybe clean these bits up or maybe spray over them. So what do you reckon we should do with that then, Rich? Um, you can use a thinners. Um, if it hasn't etched on there and burnt in there too much, if not, just get a abrasive pad. Um, we've got a couple bits we normally have lying around, and it just comes off pretty, pretty clean. We're not hiding the fact we're changing things. It's just you want to make it look as good as original as you can get it. So as you see, it just comes off there, and you're back to the bare aluminium, which is good enough. You don't really uh, don't need to cover the fact or anything like that. So with regards to like plastic bits and fiberglass bits that have got this on, what, what do you think we should do with that? That would have to be prepared and repainted. Right. So no different than painting a corner bumper you scuffed, you do the same process. But that's all you want to do, get that back to an aluminium so right. it's ready to go on the car. It's like I've got a good few hours of cleaning then. It soon comes off. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Cheers for that. I best crack on and uh, get all these parts cleaned down then. Get a few bits done. So just a little tip, and I'm by no means a professional, to take from this what you will, is but I've learned quite a lot that I'm not very good at putting things back together. So now when I take things apart, I put them into cardboard like this, and I write what it is next to them. Because even though I only did this last week, I've already forgotten most of it. And this, even with just a, a very simple description, it's enough to jog my mind as to where they go. Take for example, these hex head bolts are the same thread and pitch as some of the Torx bolts. So they could go in the same hole, but then that might mean that I've got bad clearances later on when I try and put a hex head in where a torque should be, and then the clearance is not good enough because the heads are, are narrower, they're, they're, not as, they're not as tall. So something that I tend to try and do now, if I know that I'm not putting it back together the same day as it's been taken apart. So as you can see, Johnny H5, but it does the job. And it's not foolproof. I'm still looking at this like, mm, where does that go again? but it definitely helps than just having a pile of bolts inside a container and then having to separate it all and work out what's what. So yeah, top tip from me, the unprofessional car fixer.
Right then people, what is going on? This is actually another day. I I got that I got that over encumbered with work last night that I just turned the camera off, went home, thought I'll attack this another day, and here is why. Basically, this reclaimed part what I've got, this front this basically it's the front core support. The breakers have snapped a bolt off in it, which would have been such an easy job should this car or should that bar have been on the bench? But now it's on the car. So now it's not an easy job to get this stood out and I'll just show you what I mean. But basically, that stud that's in the middle there, you can see some little smolder where I've been welding on it. Um, but basically, there's a stud in there and you can see the access here now to get anything in there. I mean, it's reasonable, it could be a lot worse, but that is a mount for the airbox and to progress any further before the wheel arch liners go in, all that sort of stuff, um, it it needs it needs to come out. So that's today's task. I can crack on with the other side and get the airbox into the other side, but until that's out, it can't go fully together. So that's a job for to that's a job for today or the next video if you're watching this. So I'll catch you in the next video and hopefully. The next video is going to be this together, me pouring some coolant in it and me starting it up for the first time, which should be very, very exciting. I'll catch you guys in the next video.